<coughs> so I hit the button, and it's intro time. Welcome back, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the show, the Ashy Knuckles MMA chat for the fans by the fans. I'm one fifth host, right? Five. <laughs> We're missing two. Mr. B Woods should be joining us shortly. Sometime he's been playing poker with Kobe Covington down south in Florida somewhere. I got uh, C4 Casual Chris with me and Marky G, um, Mosey P. And we're here to talk about some guy that is undefeated in the cage in the UFC, but defeated on the streets to the police. <laughs> <laughs> and that sir is Akon. No. <laughs> no, nah, that's the he's the goat, John Jones, like pound for pound. Got to be. I, he's I, a cocaine goat, man. Hey, until he loses. Hey. He's the goat. Hey, Matt Hamill got that dub. <clears throat> That's a bragging right. That's not a real dub, but, I mean, hey. Not, but. Hey, he won, right? He called it. Hey. I, I beat John Jones. He might not say he, it he, that clearly, but he beat John Jones. It's the loudest that he ever heard the crowd cheer for him. Stop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you first in line, man. It's not Heaven's Gates either. You first in line. <laughs> You're knocking on the door. I'm probably um, like I'm probably like two steps behind you, but hey, we there. <laughs> I hope it's a party. How <laughs> it was warm down there. When um when John Jones got DQ'd with that Hamel fight, how far was he into his career? I don't. I don't know, and I never looked that up. So, like, how, like, hmm. what year was it, I guess, you know? Like seven fights, I want to say? I want to say it was, okay. like, his second or third fight in UFC, maybe. Okay, <laughs> but it wasn't no title fight, right? It was just a... Um... At the time, he was a prospect. Uh, like, who okay. was this guy? Because I think he had previously fought Stefan Bonner, maybe? Right? Hmm. I don't know. It's it, Dude, it's been... A long time. It was a long, long time ago. Yeah. This is before John Jones was uh, saving people from getting their purses stolen in parks and stuff. While he was meditating in parks. Before fights. And this was the first go around of the Jesus loving saint of John Jones. Not the new rendition that he has now. The rebirth. Oh, the prayers and everything. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ! Alright, well, uh, enough uh, backstory about John Jones. We all know his resume is fantastic. I don't really think anybody comes close to his resume for defeating former champions back to back to back to back. But... I mean, yeah, we talked about this previously. First episode, I believe, we talked about Serial. Mr. Serial Gane. He, <laughs> uh... He's fought for the title twice? Three times now? In a room, and then... I guess three, yeah. Yeah, three three times, technically. In a room, and then two champ undisputed, yeah. Obviously, this man has no kind of wrestling game. None. Zero. He did not pull a Francis and all of a sudden become a rock star wrestler. <laughs> Next fight. Yeah. Well, I mean, shit, he's going against John Jones. I don't know if you know, but I didn't think it was going to be that easy. I honestly thought it was, it might have gone to like the third round at least. But it, John Jones made it look too easy. 
Like, we knew this guy couldn't grapple. And the only effective shot he landed in the whole fight was a kick to the the place where you're not supposed to kick. The nether regions? The man bits. I'm not even sure if I can say he kicked him in the dick. We might get dinged on YouTube. Yeah. I don't even know, but hey, he kicked him in no. the dick. Right in the nads. Yeah. Trained all camp to get a nut shot. Yeah. And he landed it. Does that count? Too bad he got scrubbed. Does that count? <laughs> like, hey, <laughs> hey, he's one for one. That's 100% accuracy, am I right? <laughs> one significant strike. To the balls. But it gets redacted. I, I mean, man, I can't even tell you, like, yeah, I didn't watch it live. I had to watch it the following morning, but still, I, you know, I wake up, notifications, John Jones is back, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let me see how this went down. So when I clicked the video to watch, it said like 20-something minutes. I'm like, okay, this should be a long fight. Boy, oh boy, was I surprised. When I tell you, like, I fast forward the whole walkouts and all that. The majority of the time of the walkouts, I guess, for the video was uh, John Jones getting the band aid tape cut off his toes or something. Oh, yeah. Bro, imagine if they kept the tape on. Just imagine what John Jones would have done. Oh, that adds uh, his- Chris, I know, I know why he had the tape on his toes. It was because of the Chell Sonnen fight. He broke his toe. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. But it also adds, uh, if you ever played like a RPG type game, it adds plus two stability <laughs> to your grappling. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, okay. Let me stop. But no, yeah, it's probably he didn't want to split his toe again and have like seven toes. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, Chelsea to split that jump. He like braced for impact with that takedown. I mean, was it Chael Sonnen that really split it, or was it just the sheer force and willpower of fucking John Jones trying to go th- through him? He's like, fuck your roids, I'm going right through you. Well, I mean, Chael Sonnen back in the day uh, caught him out on the Coca-Cola. Right. Hey. We got a cocaine bear and a cocaine goat. Yes. <laughs> but... Yeah, that's, that's probably why he had another. I mean, but did you see his toe? His toenail? Like, yeah, he needs oh, some pedicures. Oh, man, it, just, it looks like a bark of tree, man. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> dude, my toenails don't look like that as far as I know. I was like, God damn. No wonder he wanted to hide them bitches. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's, let's get back on track to it, though. <laughs> I watching when I watched it, I was just like, "Damn, he subbed from that." But I didn't see the right angle. You get what I'm saying? The angle that I saw, it just looked like, "Wow, this dude, this dude just gave up." But no, that he was in there. He had that guillotine in there, and I, I really think it was the pressure on the back of the neck that really did it. I don't think it was the choke itself. It was the pressure that he was applying to the back of his neck in the position he was in because god he wasn't getting out of that he was done actually the second time that they showed that clip they had an angle on it where it was under the neck and that shit was it tight was under as the fuck neck. it was tight yeah. okay so it was under the chin so he oh man so he had them all messed up yeah and it was fucking quick so john jones still has he don't have his lightweight speed like he said he had. His light heavyweight speed. But he's still fast for the heavyweight division. He's got his subs. He's got some power to him. I'm still not... I'm still skeptical about his gas tank, though. Uh, yeah. I need to see a fight longer than, you know, 30 seconds. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, we'll get to that part right now. Since Okay. Obviously, if he was a betting man, you should have bet something on John Jones, right? 
Mm-hmm. Been a nice little come up. If you were to bet when it first opened up, I think it was at a uh, hundred and forty plus one forty. So that's a nice little come up. You're getting paid regardless. <clears throat> but for this next fight, he's hoping he's fighting Stipe. I'm not sure if that's been confirmed yet. It's you know the talk of the town. <laughs> So yeah, I know they're trying to go for like inter- international fight week. Yes, um, <laughs> but you know nothing's like like no ink has been done and dealt with. So S- Stipe wants it. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Stipe wants it. Th- they they set Stipe up for it. They had Stipe at the fight. He was front row and center. You know they're setting it up for it. I think that's what's gonna happen. That boy did like five interviews on Monday. Just put it that way. <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? I, I watched like one of them, so yeah, he's uh he's in there with that fight. That's gonna be an interesting one, honestly. I feel because I don't. I I could see John Jones winning decision, but I, I mean I could see him also finishing Stipe. I was about to say I could see John Jones finishing Stipe. But I don't know how Stipe wins. And I'm not counting him out. You know what I'm saying? Stipe can win a long, grueling battle. I think Stipe, he, he could possibly piece up John Jones. Because that stand-up yeah, did not look good at all. I mean, there wasn't much of it, but yeah, you're right. You right. Just his approach with everything. Besides getting kicked in the dick, but I mean... I would say that Stipe would probably have to just lean heavily on his boxing. I don't think it'll be a grappling match at all. I don't. I think the only reason why Stipe would shoot is if he gets hurt. I see, and I think it's got to go into the later rounds. I could. I could see one way Stipe gets hurt is uh, up close in the clinch, and John lands a short elbow. You get what I'm saying? Kind of similar to how uh, Cormier put out Stipe. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He could go out, or he could get hurt and then shoot for a single or something, or you know, something. Well, I don't know. Like coming from just watching previous fights, it seemed like Cormier was a better wrestler than Stipe was, mm-hmm. and, and Jones kind of, you know, he. He he was able to take down Cormier, so you know MMA math. All right, all right, Chris. Let me give you a history lesson. All right. I don't think John Jones got taken down until he fought Gustafsson. Am I right? The first fight. Correct, but no one expected it. Nobody expected it. Gustafsson did he take down Daniel Cormier? Damn, Chris, where'd you go? My bad, hold on. <laughs> but I'll give you some some history lessons. That MMA math does not work. Because Cormier, I'm pretty sure, did not get taken down by Gustafsson, but it was a great fight. MMA math does work, and we'll talk about it later. Oh, boy. We got some equations coming? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well... Since we pretty much know the fight that's going to happen between the heavyweights. It's kind of crazy, man, because like I was alluding to earlier, we called Surreal Gon's rise, and it was pretty fast. Because if you think about it, what what was that? We started the pod, what, three years ago, give or take, during the pandemic wow. time? Close to it. And we was... uh. Basically saying this dude was the next coming of whatever. And we also said he's going to be fighting for the title multiple times. Even if he I think we win. even said he was going to be nah. champ. We did say he was, he was interim champ. He was interim champ. So we called that one. But that's in a, a kind of shallow division. Yeah, and I mean... One of the takeaways from this most recent fight is you just... Serial's one of the most dominant 
guys in that division, and he just got put away easy by Jones. So do you think Jones just runs away with this division? I don't know. Depending on the contenders that he's going to be up against, like uh, Pavlovich, I don't know if that's going to be as easy as it was with uh, Cyril Gaon. Um Curtis Blades? Like, that's going to be that number one contender spot is between Pavlovich and Blades. And I don't know who will come up on top with that one because Pavlovich is a fucking... He's yeah, a truck. They're fighting soon, right? Uh, the next uh, few months? I think like a few months. Yeah. Yeah. If, if Curtis Blades can hide his transitions into takedowns, a little bit better, then he wins easily. Because that's his only weakness. His takedowns are telegraphed. He always gets caught going know. in. Mm-hmm. But there's also that one cat from the UK, uh, Tom Aspinall. No. Oh. Hey, he's he's good. <laughs> yeah. hey, he didn't really lose that fight. I mean, his knee gave out. You know, but I mean, hey, How, we was robbed. Does he have a fight. fight coming up? No, he's got healed up from that. Uh, I think he tore his ACL or his whole knee. I think it was MCL, yeah. ACL, all that. I think it's all jacked up. lower leg. Yeah, and I feel he poses the greatest threat to John Jones because of how good he is everywhere. Yeah. And then, he's got good wrestling, and uh, his striking is really good. And he he kind of does he he moves really light too, exactly for a heavyweight. Exactly. And then pa- Pavlovich, Pavlovich. Basically, whoever wins out of that fight is gonna get the title fight between uh, with John Jones. Well, if John Jones beats Stipe, has Blades ever gotten the title fight? Nah, he always ran into this dude named Francis. <laughs> <laughs> or Derek Jared. Lewis once. <laughs> oh, yeah. De- hey, Derek Lewis is the uh, spoiler to the party. Yeah. yeah I mean, look, so dude, who, he got so dubbed on some who, people. Who would be the gatekeeper inside of the heavyweight division? Did it move from Derek Lewis to gone? No. I, I would say it's still Derek Lewis. Nah, it's uh, Drago. What's the name? Let me pull it up. Hold up. Volkov? Bag Alexander Volkov? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. That makes sense, yeah. That is the guy that you want to fight to get a title shot. Man, they dropped Derek Lewis all the way to 11. Damn! I didn't even know there was... I didn't even know there was... No, they got 15 heavyweights. Don't get it twisted. They got 15 heavyweights. They got at least 15. They got 15 of them. For sure. Damn. That jump looks crazy seeing John Jones there. Okay. Damn, you got some good names too up there too. I almost forgot Jamal Hill was the light heavyweight champ right now. All Good right. for him. So, I mean, dude, whoever is typing this stuff up, man. Like, how you got Surreal Gun and Stipe both at number one? <laughs> hey, dude, you got one job to do, bro. How you miscount that? Like, you forgot two was a number? Like... <laughs> one 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 plus one is two. Like what? What the hell are you doing? And Stipe had to move up one spot to tie. Exactly. For one. <laughs> what are you doing, man? You must got like some crazy people doing this. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me. All right. So. Yeah. Yeah. But dude, Jones the goat, man. To be honest, like this is the first like fight as a uh, UFC fan, or as an MMA fan, that I've seen of John Jones. And so you didn't that's get to see crazy nothing, to think uh, about. Yeah. none of his animation. 
<laughs> Casual is, question man. showing it his is. stripes. You never got <laughs> to see is. none of his innovation. Like, dude, he's an innovator. Spinning back elbows. The uh, what his kicks to the what is it, oblique kicks? His oblique. Oh kicks. Yeah, 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 dude. Oblique he killing. he is a freaking yeah, man. innovator, man. Like his stuff, like people start copying. They're biters. And you that's the saying? kind of thing I was kind of disappointed about with the fight. It was like I didn't get to see more of Jones. You know, like so I wanted this... to see his, you know, his oblique kicks and all of his like dynamic movements and stuff like that. The, the surprising part to me is standard John Jones usually looks at a fighter and finds out what their strengths are and uses it against them. He wants to beat them at their own game every time. And that's what makes him such a legend. No matter who he goes against, he tries to beat them at their own game. This time against Gone, he just had an opening that he was just like, all right, this motherfucker's going out now. Yeah. I expected him to kickbox him the whole time, but uh, yeah, no. He he was just like, all right, you going to give me your neck? I'm going to take it with me. Yeah, that's kind of what I was expecting, too, was like a uh, kickboxing match. But Mm -hmm. as soon as Gon got taken down, like it was, dude, done and over with. Yeah. Gon just has no ground game, man. Like, yeah, no. None. He doesn't know, know how to man. mix it up like he should at this point. He really needs to work on it. It doesn't seem like he has been working on it. I don't no, know. Not he, at all. He's, he's like, you, you've heard, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you saw the interviews where he's talking about, like, he doesn't train in between fights and, yeah. like, he just, I don't know, he's lazy, I guess, is what his excuse is. And I feel like maybe that might have been a an excuse that he was using from the get-go, but... Well, I mean, to be fair, when um, Francis was with that coach, he kind of had the same stigmatism on him, like, too, where he would take, like, vacations and stuff instead of training. He'd go back to, uh, like, France, and he'd go back to... um, Nigeria and all that stuff and he wouldn't really train between fights and then he'd like try to crush it for like two weeks and then he'd go into a fight but all he had was a fucking giant right hand so how much do you need to train for just knocking the fuck so or knocking somebody the fuck out we talk talking about uh, Francis and uh yeah. Yeah. C- Cereals training yeah that boy was playing yeah, but FIFA talking about being lazy. <laughs> he was playing FIFA <laughs> But yeah, John Jones, man. I don't think there's enough questions answered yet. Mm-mm. How about after the Stipe fight? You think that'll answer some questions? It should. It should answer a lot. If we can get a good three rounds out of that fight, it'll answer all the questions. Yeah. Because uh, three rounds for a heavyweight is a lot. Honestly, I I only see uh, John Jones fighting three more times. He said one more time. Well, his coach did. His coach said one more time, and he's probably going to be done. It. I would love to see him fight three more times, but who would be the three people that he fights? That's what I was getting to. Okay, Stipe, that's one. Then I imagine he would want to take out one of these contenders, right? The He'll probably fight the winner of... The Pavlich and Blades fight, right? That's two. And the third fight, this is the only one. If Francis somehow makes his way back to the UFC, that's the only other fight I see him taking. So realistically, probably two more. You get what I'm saying? I don't know his contract or whatever, but two more realistically. Like, we might get it this year. Throughout the year, he might fight the uh, summertime July, the July International Fight Week card. And then we'll get the end of year card with John Jones fighting the winner of that. Because, you know, heavyweights, they take a while. Or it could be a year from now, Super Bowl weekend, give or take. You forget who we're talking about. John Jones is what, 35 now? He's 35. 
So let's say he does I say he does two more fights. He'll fight when he's 37 and then again when he's like 39 cuz he fights once every 2 years. Oh, so you say he's going to get in some trouble. Oh, I'm surprised he hasn't already. <laughs> he's a changed man. Hey, you know he's married now, right? He's been married. No. Well, that's been one of his partner? sparring partners. Well, I, I, I mean, I thought they split up, but they back together. Nah, you get addicted to that toxic shit. They, well, they back together. <laughs> they back together. I mean, I, I mean, you know the memes out there. There's some crazy stuff, man. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. I, I don't want to get there. I don't. I don't want to go there. I don't want to. We there. need a reality yeah. show with Conor McGregor and John Jones just partying together. Well, shit. You get all the fights you want. They, they go in the jail. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get like a crazy reality show right there. It's gonna be like scared straight, mixed with the real world. Like, hold up, wait a minute. Well, I didn't. I, what? As real as it gets, right? <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. Hey, pussy, you still there? Is that J-Dubs? That's not J-Dubs. Uh, That's J-Dubs. Yeah. Cool. Um, is the podcast going right now? Yes. Okay. I, I'm a, a late Colin, so uh, just want to talk about how uh, amazing and how the talk is over. John Jones is the goat. No one can say anything ever again. Uh, and Francis Ngannou is a has been. He's washed. No one cares about him. No one really does. So he he's salty, and he said, you know, he sent a tweet to John. Congrats from the real heavyweight king. And. That's laughable to me because, you know, his story is he is fighting for the fighters and all this. But, you know, he was being unreasonable with these demands. He was looking for a way out. Because if John could do what he did to Gon, Francis was going to lose his title very quickly and he would be irrelevant. Now he has the cope of, I'm, I walked away, the champ. I'm I'm the actual champ, even though we all know he would lose very handily to John Jones. Um, and after John beat Stipe, I think people will forget about Nganu. What are your thoughts? I said for a long time that the second that Nganu leaves uh, MMA and leaves the UFC, that. <clears throat> If anything, he might get the Tyson Fury fight, but he waited too long, they iced that shit, and no one really cares about it anymore. So I knew that was a mistake right off the bat. I yeah. agree that he, he should be fighting for the fighters and getting them a little bit better pay, but he played his hand wrong. Well, so the thing is, he, uh, he was not a draw. Like, they... The numbers were supposed to be like 1.2 million for his versus gone. Like, that's what they were tracking. And they had a good story to tell because, you know, they were former training partners. You know, they had the inside scoop on each other. They both had similar backgrounds. You know, they really could have told a compelling story, but they did none of the work. And they only sold 300K. And that's like a, that's a dud for a championship fight. So... You know, he fucked up there by not wanting to do any hype or anything like that. Not tell it, even if he were to just go up and tell his story of how he got to the UFC and all the hardship, like, he's told it before, but if you tell it again and again and let people hear it, like, that builds some, you know, some, some support for you, some people that buy in, but he, he just wasn't a draw. And I think the fact that he's no longer the UFC heavyweight champ Tyson Fury has no, no desire to fight him. Because he said in the ring, I will fight the UFC heavyweight champ. So if you, if, 
Dana would really want to be petty, Dana could say, okay, John Jones, you're my heavyweight champion. I'll let you go box Tyson Fury. I, I don't think that'll happen, but if he were to do Terrible that, idea. Dana would get nothing. Because the only reason McGregor was able to get that money fighting Floyd Mayweather was because he was a, the first ever double mm-hmm. champ. He was fighting this light heavyweight, or, or not, um, he was a lightweight champion and featherweight champion, and he fought uh, Mayweather, and he had Dana backing him and the UFC backing him. So, of course he's going to get a big payday. These guys don't understand the business side of fighting. And they just think that these, like, boxing matches, like, magically pay you out. Because, like, Mayweather, um, so I, I did some digging, and, you know, they say he's, like, getting 100, 100 million per fight or whatever. Um, if you look into his finances, it's more like he's made about $100 million over the course of his career, maybe a little bit more, but he's not, he was not getting $100 million. That is utter nonsense. And a lot of these like boxers don't really get that much. Either. I mean, boxing gets a lot more money. Like, oh, with their, <clears throat> their main, main guys get a shit ton of money. But that's because they also get a it's, lot more gambling lot. going on for them. The, well, but the it, difference it's, it's is also... they have, like, top-tier guys that get paid that much money. And their lower-end guys are getting paid, like, 500 bucks. Yeah, it's, it's like MMA, because if you're a top-tier guy in MMA, you can make a lot of money if you are a draw, if you know how to bring eyes to the fight. Like, uh, Chael Summon, he said like uh, in an interview the other day that the most he ever got paid for a single fight was about $8.8 million, and that was against uh, Anderson Silva. Um, I don't know if it was one or two, but because he promoted the shit out of that fight, he got a bunch of money. And, you know, McGregor, he's already starting shit with Chandler on the Tough House. Um, apparently, it came out today that he got, I like, started pushing him after a disagreement on the filming. And yeah, someone got everything. knocked out, I thought. <clears throat> yeah. So, he, like, very few guys understand the fight game as a whole. Because the fight game is not cage fighting. It is marketing... It is promotion. It is narrative tell, like being able to weave a, a story to tell the audience to get them to buy in. It's entertainment first and foremost, and these guys just don't get it. So, and I, I do think, uh, I, I do think uh, Ngannou is scared of John. I, I would, I truly believe that. I know people were giving me shit when I. Oh, that's just Dana's talking point, but if you keep on making these radical demands that you know the other side, like, because if you're in a negotiation, and you're good faith negotiation, you can wiggle them. Or, you know, you can get other people in there to negotiate on your behalf, but it seems like everything I've heard is he kept on adding things that were never going to happen, and he knew that UFC wasn't going to concede to, and he, they were going to pay him. He was going to be the highest paid heavyweight ever if he took it. But he said, he, oh, I, I, you know, he has this whole narrative out there. But it feels like he didn't want to be in the UFC anymore. You know what I mean? All right, John. Uh, thank you for the insight. But this is the question that we was uh, answering earlier. You can answer this one. You ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. We all think John Jones has two to three fights left. Who do you think he fights next? Well, we know it's Stipe, but after that fight, if he wins. Um, so that will depend on a few things. Uh, is is Asmanal going to return? And when is he going to return? In what condition? I like that um, one. I like that one. Uh, so Asmanal is a guy I'd like to see him fight. Because he's got eight eight fights on his contract, so he Ooh. technically has seven. Who John, John Jones? He's got a seven yeah. fight, or eight fight contract right now. That doesn't mean he has to actually fight them all. No, 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 no. Yeah, I know yeah, you, you retired, but then you still, you know, you can't go do nothing else unless you get out the contract. But still, well, he's got eight fights. 
Mm-hmm. You really think John but Jones is go anywhere other than UFC? But absolutely he did talk not. About he did talk like a year ago or a year and a half ago about having about five or six fights left in him. So in his head, at least back then, he had five or six left in him. So what three years you ago? Know, what, uh, that was like a year, year and a half ago. Okay, so he <laughs> fought his on. wife. That's one. Um, Serial gun, that's you know, two. Hey, hey, before before you, you know, start, you know, chastising John. Hey, uh, he's undefeated in the cage, bro. Let's just consider what she might have done to deserve it, okay? Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not going to talk <laughs> about his outside the cage activities. That's all on him. I think I'm second in line now. I moved back one. Um, yeah, John, you, you are definitely knocking on the unpearly gates right now. <laughs> um, well, you know, I, uh, I I would like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that little bit that John did. Women's History Month now, too. Huh? Ooh, man, John, you, <laughs> you, you, you was slipping, buddy. You was slipping. Johnny Dubs um, with the uh I, I, the what what they call it nowadays the toxic masculinity <laughs> Jesus I what was, was that dude's name only one what was the bald head dude's name uh, that that uh what's his name Andrew Tate yeah yeah you with the Andrew, An- Andrew Tate, Tate <laughs> stuff going on over here buddy hey stop oh, it. hey stop I, it I was the only guy <laughs> in my chat uh, only guy in my friend group. That was betting on and picking Grasso to win. Hey, hey, Everyone hey. Else was We're not there yet. Down. You step back. We'll get there. We're still on John Jones. We're getting to that. John Jones. The GOAT. The great one. The, you know, I, I do think he, uh, he should fight um, Aspinall. And I would like to see him fight uh, Sergey. Because Sergey is just like a big Russian Francis Ngannou, right? Just freak, freak power. Question, who has Aspinall fought to deserve that fight? Alexander Volkov, and he got, he um, broke his ACL with Curtis Blade? Yeah. But who else has he before fought? We get, before we get, get into fight. deserve. Oh, he's not going to just jump to that. I think he'll fight, have to oh, fight hey. somebody. Here's the thing with the heavyweights. None of these guys were calling each other out. None of these guys were doing any work. None of these guys were doing anything. So it doesn't matter what you deserve. If you can pitch it and sell it and get Dana to approve it, I'm fine by it. Because there's, like, that division's a mess. So literally I'll throw anyone that would be a compelling fight that could sell. sell. Like, that's, that's why I want John to fight, right? I want Stipe to secure his legacy. I would like him to fight Sergey because that's as close as we're going to get to Francis. Um, and Aspinall, so, you know, he has a Stipe fight, right? And then he's going to have some time off. Probably a lot longer time off because I think Stipe is going to last a lot longer than that two-pump chump gone. Um, <laughs> so, because if we do the MMA math, you know, uh, Stipe... Has two wins over uh, DC. John Jones got two wins over him as well. Uh, you know, so we we can see that fight going, you know, a little bit longer than two minutes in after one nut kick. Hey man, so hey, 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 hey. you're missing a variable Stipe? though. You're missing a variable though. What variable? Stepe got a loss to DC. That's got to count yeah, as something, right? Lost. That's got to count as something. That's like at least lost. a negative two. Some. But four months prior to that, he had beat uh, in a very very brutal decision uh, against Francis Ngannou, and for sure that had messed up his chin. Uh, so you that, can't so go. That's another variable. So he also lost negative three to his chin, is what you're telling me. Right. But that second fight, he was eating what DC was throwing and returning fire. And then in that second fight, he did that mid uh, mid adjustment to the liver and just started wailing on that liver and took DC out. 
Where you made DC turn into King Hippo is what you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. And then that third fight wasn't even close. It was a blowout for Stipe. Absolutely. So, and Stipe has been continuing to train and stay busy, and he's still hungry. He put on some muscle, too. You know that, right? Yeah, he's Mm -hmm. bigger. He's bigger than he's ever been. And that leads me to think that John might be in for some surprise. Because, you know, arguably the reason why Stipe lost to Nganu was because he was too small at that point. Um, if he had gotten, if he had continued to just get bigger, because I knew he cut down even more from what he would previously at when we fought the first time. John, I got a question. Mm-hmm. Does it does it feel weird when you say John? No. Because <laughs> you know your name's John, and then you're talking about John. Does it feel weird? Um, Do you no. feel like you're talking about yourself? I guess. No. Uh, I feel like I'm talking about the goat, the king, the great one. Nah, I was um, just wondering because I I never really had to say like my name. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was just curious. <laughs> like you guys, Moses Tiago. Yeah, do, you, do you guys have to do it, if Moses Tiago? Well, I was just curious because it's like it's different for me. My name's not common. I'm a junior, yeah. so if I got refer to my dad, I'll just say senior. But you know what I'm saying? Right, oh, dude, right. Same with me. Like I have Chris Curtis. In my whole my life, name. I have okay. never met another Moses that wasn't my dad. So, yeah, I was just curious. I, I, I've met um, a Moses that uh, he was Hebrew. He wasn't. Uh, but it seems like it, it'd either be. Jewish I'm a hundred percent American, bro. <laughs> yeah, Born and raised. Yes. I, I know, I remember. Um, anyway. I'm not getting deported, if that's what you're alluding to. Oh, oh no. I, I wasn't even alluding to them all. But, you know, there is a trend of Moses, Jesus, you know. There's that. Anyway, back to the fight. You're knocking so, on the unpearly gates, though, John. Uh, that's. <laughs> he was that's trying to bring true. up all the disciples, though. <laughs> no, no mortal man can cast uh, judgment on me. Philippians four four three. What is it? I have been saved by the Lord. He has for, forgiven me. He died for my sins, and he died for John Jones' sins. So we all need to forgive him and and let let go. Um, Are you Catholic? Jesus Christ. I'm just saying, that, if you're Catholic, you, you need to go to a confessional this weekend. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Repent. All right, guys, we've been, we've been, we've been dragging on, on uh, John Jones for 43 minutes. Let's, let's, let's go to the other title fight. Let's go to the other title fight. Let's go. Let's go, and I'm pretty sure nobody here besides John, but John's been missing in action. We don't know where Johnny Dub's been. I'm pretty sure I picked uh, Shevchenko and said, you got to show me otherwise. Chris? Yeah, Shevchenko. I Mark? thought Shevchenko was going to dominate, but yeah. Mark? I'm a Gracio fan, and I still pick Shevchenko. John. Shevchenko? Say your piece. So, I... I, um... Ever, like I was in a group of friends and everything, and they are all rooting and betting on the favorites for every fight. And I uh, something in me, I saw an interview where they were saying how Shevchenko, uh, Valentina, she had apparently they alluded to her having an affair with John Jones and some drama there. Oh, and, with Holly Holm. Yeah, the love triangle. I like, oh. I've seen that. I've seen yeah. that. And then I saw an interview of her, and she's acting all like cutesy, uh, kindergartner teacher, talking down and acting like a goody girl. And it's like, hold up. If you go to, if, if one of the first things you do when John Jones is fucking up and you go to defend him, and you have a bunch of tattoos, and uh, 
you know, you're having an affair with John Jones, you're you're not a you're not a good girl. Uh huh. You talking about Holly so, Holm or Shevchenko? Shevchenko. So that got me thinking, and then I uh, saw a few interviews with uh, Grasso, and I went and rewatched her fights, and I was like, I feel like she's going to beat her. I wanted her to beat her, and I felt like after that first like minute or two, I was like, oh, yeah, she, she can do it. Yeah, she did look uh, fantastic in the first round. I scored her winning the first round of that fight, and then... Rounds two and three, I lean toward the champion mm-hmm. to Shevchenko, but then that that mistake, the whiff of the spinning back kick, and she climbed no, her no, back so fast. Shit. Yeah, exactly. She tra- she she trained to climb that back and take it so fast it was immaculate. Like that, so, it was like like that. It was like wow. Here's something Which is I great for her. It's a good frame hit. It was like, good for her because Shevchenko was starting to run away with that fight. She was starting to do her, her thing, starting to get into her rhythm, and then that one mistake lost it all for her. So here's something I noticed in, in, on that card in general. I don't know if anyone else did, but they were really like on the ball with giving warnings and standing up and and for for no action for the rest like lame prey stuff. That's good. That? That's fantastic. They should do that. Mm. And I my conspiracy brain is that a lot of people were very upset with the last card with Islam and Volk and, and then you also had the Maga Nav and the Yan. Like they're getting some bad feedback. So that's maybe one of the reasons why they're, you know, not, not letting it go that way. Cause that they, cause they were getting on them really like almost prematurely. I, I felt in some, some cases, but like, you know, giving warnings, giving warnings, which is good. I'm, I'm glad they're doing it now. Listen, I think that the rule set of one FC and that more, people in America are beginning to see the rule set for it and the cards given out for the lay and pray style. It's they're starting to notice like, Oh, these guys don't want to see this kind of stuff. So maybe, yeah, they're put on notice. Hey, lay and pray ain't going to work no more. We, we need to excite the fans. Like you're not going to have, you have the hardcores watching, of course, no matter what, but you're not going to draw in casuals when their opinion of the fight is, hey, I'm going to hold him down and make sure he does nothing. But I'm not going to hurt him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. They're not going to bring in no fans that way. Like, if you just you just go to some some random dude and ask him if he watches UFC, he'll probably tell you, like, I like watching it until they start wrestling and not doing nothing. Mm. Am, am I right? Yeah. Like 99% of the time. Like, there's people out there that knows what the UFC is. They don't know what MMA is, but they know what the UFC is. And they said they like watching it only when people are standing and banging. Am I right? Right. Like 99% I of the time. I think it depends. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry. I, I think it depends on how um, technical the grappling is on the ground. Like, if it's something exciting where, like, a bunch of position changes and stuff like that, then, yeah, that shit is exciting. But if it's just, um, you know, just laying on someone, yeah, that shit gets boring. But, yeah. Hey, fun fact. Fun fact. Shevchenko trained here in Jacksonville. At Smiley's. Yeah, Smiley's. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to Smiley's. Oh. Yeah. So I, I kind of hmm. skipping around a little bit, but yeah, uh, probably going back to bed here in a little bit. The what? What? What a what? I'm probably going to go back to bed here in a little bit. But I did want to talk about um, how Bo Nickel I think got exposed a little bit. Hold up, John! Jesus Christ, we're still on the uh, all over the place. The Shevchenko fight. <laughs> 
We, we skipping two fights. We'll, we'll go to uh, Bo Nickel next. We'll go Bo Nickel next because you know I want to talk about yeah. too. That and Shavkat. Shavkat yeah. is is he's a killer. He's not ready yet. Yeah, but he's a killer. Why don't you think he's ready? No. Grasso fights Shevchenko next. We're going to get a rematch of that. She did what she had to do since John wants to fast forward to the future real quick. Uh, <laughs> in the rematch, we know that uh, Shevchenko is probably going to be the favorite. Mm-hmm. Mexico has two real champions currently, and they both weigh the same weight. And... <laughs> I'm, I'm not even trying to tell a joke. I'm just being real. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so funny. Dude. I'm just that's being so real, funny. man. I'm just being so real. Now, it's like, yo, they, they, same hey, weight class. Wow. They had potentially wow. one of the greatest of all time heavyweights that never got to do his thing due to injury. So 100%. we'll just go with that. Just remember that. I'm just glad that America... North, Central, South, we got titles. We got titles. <laughs> we got titles. We claiming them all. We got titles. We got titles in this from this this area. You get what I'm saying? From middleweight. To we got titles. Central America. We got a hey, and we the no. we we the no, big no, daddy. Got against Africa. Africa. Big daddy. We got we got the Yo, John Jones. We hey the baddest man on the planet is John Jones right now. So hey, we got the heavyweight strap. We got the light heavyweight strap on top of that. Hold up, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? We got phantom weight. We got hey we got, hey we got yeah. the, the big guys. Well, it was Jamaica, but yeah. Featherweight, no, nah, it ain't happening. Hey. I don't see it happening. The Hawaiian England pride still couldn't got get one it. of the premier uh, titles, though. Yeah, the, the England that, still got one of they the got, titles. They got right there. Like, right there, they got that. They got 45, 55, and uh, 70. They, they got those, but after that, America's. <laughs> America's. America's. America. America. United States and others. <clears throat> hey, surrounding territories. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, John. We'll, we'll hop to uh, Bo Nickel, the wrestling prodigy. Uh, skip Shavkat, oh, man. We're, we're going to get to Shavkat. More. He's going to go to sleep. We'll talk about Shavkat <laughs> while, while he goes to sleep. Okay. Maybe Brian okay. will... Uh, maybe we'll switch out the woods. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like Bo was exposed for uh, being not as clean, precise, or... Uh, he's, he's just still very green. He was very like, exposed in that aspect. He... Didn't get the takedown until after he did a nut shot, a very blatant nut shot. Um, uh, that didn't sit right with me. I don't know about you guys, but I was just like, really? No, I wasn't a fan. It was, um, he's still young in the game, you know? So. Yeah. And I don't like the fact that he went on Errol Hawani and he made a big stink saying, I would rather retire than. Be on the undercard. That's old um, news, John. Well, that's why he got put on. Yeah, it's but kind of old. But Drickus Duplexi, he earned fight of the night, and he beat Darren Till. No, in, uh, number ten, right? Barely, fighter. barely. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Going back to um, Bo Nickel. Well, is he still in- on the twelve uh, twelve? Is he still on twelve twelve? As a uh, contender series winner? That's a good question. Doubtful. Hey, John, I got a question for you, though. You was a wrestler, right? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Say you're in a match. Say if you accidentally hit your opponent's cup and the ref didn't see it and you got the takedown from there and the pin, what would you do? Uh, I, I wouldn't. I would immediately draw 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 to that because I'm not a scumbag. Oh, you let you let the ref know that you. Oh, hey, I hit his cup, and yeah. that's how I got this yeah. pin. 
Is that what you're telling no, me? No, I, 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 I get the knee, and I know I hit six up, and I see him wince. I'm stopping him. Like, ref, this is what happened. Foul me. Honest John. Yeah. Honest I'm John. Not, yeah. <clears throat> well, in, in the wrestling team, So you don't leave it up to the ref? You, you live or die by your, your sense of honor. I mean, it's a very tight-knit. And if the word gets around like you're that kind of that kind of bitch, you know that will take cheap shots to win. Nah, you're you're gonna be in for a bad time. Hey man, I, like I live honor. or die by the money that I can feed myself with. And if you're gonna lose half my check just for a fucking foul, I'm I'm taking that fucking cheap shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he wasn't gonna lose his money for the cheap shot. He if he's so skilled, he should have been able to. Get that position without, or get that position again without having to, you know, knee the guy in the nuts. <laughs> but I digress. So, Drickus Duplessis was bitching about being put on an undercard despite, you know, his, like, getting a fight at the night and all that. And he was calling out uh, Bo Nickel, you know, like, who's this guy? He's debuting. What, what is, like, and uh, rightly so. And I do hope they start beefing because um, that'd be a very interesting uh, matchup. But uh, I, I do like Drickus though uh, a bit more than Bo Nickel. Uh, I, I was riding the the Nickel hype train, but just his uh, like I don't know. I'm, I'm not 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 a big fan as as much now. Something well, about him his, like demeanor, wrong. like his. Um... The way he talks, like yeah, I, maybe I, it's it's something about him is just not quite you know it's just it's off to me and I'm like he needs oh, to get humbled. Sure yeah, he he needs to get his ass beat. And who's going to bring it to him? Interesting question. So I could definitely see. Um, a few people bringing it to him. Um, so, you know, he's uh, one of the best wrestlers in, in the division, for sure. But uh, how would he do against Kamba? How would he do against a like actual striker with takedown, you know? Because he's... All he's done is just wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. He hasn't really, like, gotten into... No striking. Battle, right? You know, he hasn't, he hasn't gone to war. Because... It's very easy to wrestle when you don't have a guy punching you in the face. You can you have your game plan in your head, and you know you can enact it usually. But uh, it's a big it's a different story when you're getting rocked every every other you know hit. Who you'd like to see him against? Mm-hmm. Gasolum. Um, yeah. Derek well, Brunson. And, and here's the issue Herb as well: of putting him on the main card. Now, you don't have any hands for him to crush. You have to have him on the main card again and again and again. So you have to get him actual, like, talented, good people. So that, that rising prospect isn't going to be protected. So, for good or ill... But, you know, I don't think he's a Conor McGregor who can just go on a, a tear, you know. I, I don't think he's that good as people are making him out to be. Like, for sure he's a great wrestler, but I have yet to see anything that makes me think he is a good mixed martial artist. Okay, fair assumption. Oh. Fair assumption. Oh. Fair assumption. I, I mean, I, yeah. I understand where you're coming from. Like, yeah, he beat another contender series uh, alumni, right? Mm-hmm. So he's yet to prove himself, but he is doing the similar trajectory that Hamza did. Am I right? But not in yeah. as short of a span, because Hamza was one of the uh, pandemic kings. Him and uh, Kevin Holland, right? Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, you're right. Holy shit, yeah. Yeah, like those guys, they, I mean, that's all we had. Literally, sports world yeah, was literally from what we had from March till football season, literally, 
was UFCs. That's all we got to do. So, yeah, it's a little different now, though. Honestly, I, I really think he'll probably either go with uh, Hermanson at 10. I know uh, Gashlam got a fight coming up, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Gashlam's fighting, where was it? Uh, Marvin Vittori is fighting. Oh, uh, Gaslam is fighting. Um, Chris Curtis. Shit. Yes, Chris Curtis. And then Roman Dulodsky is fighting uh, Vittori, right? Roman Dulodsky's. Mm. So I guess maybe the only person left for him is um, Whitaker, Kenanier, or Costa. No. But he was talking shit about Costa. He's not good. And like. I, I don't really see him getting a fight that high up, but Hermanson. Who, DDP? No, not DDP. I'm talking about Bo Nickel. Oh, my bad. Sorry, DDP guys. deserves a big fight. Jeez. I'd like to see <laughs> Bo Nickel versus Brendan Allen. Yeah. That could happen. That's good. Um, Bo. Yeah. Oh no! I feel DDP gets smoked by Robert Whitaker. Oh, uh, oh, one hundred percent. And I feel he has a shot well, against Jerry Cannonier. So, as long as he doesn't get gassed. Sadly, but so, yeah, that's what, the only knock what, I got on him right now. What Jerkus needs is he needs to get his nose fixed because that's fucking him up. Because he said it <laughs> in interviews and stuff, he can't he can't breathe through his nose, so he'll like. It, he, it, it's you know breathing from your mouth also is just draining in and of itself when you're in a uh, car, high cardio intensive. So that for sure is like gassing him. So if he fixes his nasal cavities and everything, and he learns to pace himself, I think he, he will go far. But he needs to get that taken care of. He said he was going to do it before, but then he got offered this fight, and it's a huge opportunity, and he dived on it. It didn't work very He's well for the yeah. axe murderer. All right, so we kind of talked about DDP. We got that fight out the way. Derek Brunson probably retiring. He said that was his last one. Yo, Derek Brunson looked good though in the first round. Derek Brunson looked really good. I didn't even watch it because John likes DDP so much. I didn't even watch it. God, <laughs> go do yourself a favor. I ain't go watch, watch it, man. Go watch. Go re- Go watch, watch it. it, man. I was talking so Dude. much trash to him too. I Derek was like, Brunson, Brunson's gonna finish him. I feel like him. Derek. With that fight, I feel like Derek Brunson did the exact same shit with um Kenanier. Like he fucking dominated the first round, right? In the second round, he just got gassed out. Blonde Brunson showed up for the first round. Second round, regular Derek Brunson showed up. He didn't eat a sensu bean in between rounds? No, he didn't eat a sensu bean. Shit. His uh, his corner actually threw in the towel. Oh, Lord. Second second time in a row. There there was one second left in the round, and they threw in the towel. Well, you got to see that that, that series of events, because he was just getting hammered. Really I'm not bad. saying it was the, the wrong ground, yeah. choice. It was the right choice to throw in so, the towel. He was about to die. But Yeah, yeah. He he, he Dude, thought the sooner. already like over or like the clock had already went over because he stopped everything and he got slammed real bad. But uh if you notice like Drickus fought like he's that's how he fights. This is like it's so chaotic, so hectic, so uh, fast pace that you can't really um, like. It's hard to see who's really winning or losing. It's very reckless, but you know, it's very fun. Yeah, I know someone was saying that they thought he was going to lose. I was like, no, just just wait. Let's just mute it. A side note, um, I would like to uh, shout out Cody Garbage for getting a win. Hey, that boy was dancing. He got that back was, to uh, his dancing. That was clean. Clean little uprock. 
he got right. he got in a little trouble in that last that last round, but he he danced it out and walked around. He got good. Shout out to him, yeah. Cody Garbage. Not, not he get hit, man. <laughs> All right, so like I was saying, we talked about DDP with the middleweights. Let's talk about the welterweight guy, the guy that just moved up three spots. Shavkat Rachmanov, and I'm pretty sure I said his name right this time. Not Shavkat. You, I think you did, but it's not Shavkat. It's Shavkat. Yo, I'm all aboard, bro. I'm all on the hype train, man. I like this dude. I like this dude. I think, I think Shavkat. He be, uh... He's got a good ass chin. Like he took some shots from hands of steel, oh. like a lot. Yeah. Here's the thing: is um. For what it's worth, um, you know, Joe Rogan was talking to him, and he's saying, talking about a title contention, right? Really. No, no, and no, no, I only no. bring that. Up. I only bring that up because we know for a fact that Rogan has convinced Dana to make title fights before with Charles and Islam. So that was Rogan, you know, mentioning it to him. Shavkat, like, with that performance, you, I could easily see you in a title fight. And Shavkat would be like, yeah, that's great. I, I want to do that by the end of the year. Also, he called out Kobe, which I think would be a great fight as well. Um, or, like, I really think he's one win away from the title. But honestly, if he, if, he, if say, Leon Edwards, something happens, or, that, or after that fight, and they need someone to fight, like, they need to, you know, to throw someone in. I could see him them throwing them in, you know what I mean? Like, I think he can hang... I, like, I've seen enough from him to know that he is a championship material. You think so? Yeah, for sure. He's going to be a future champ. I, I think he, he is the future, but I don't... I really don't see him beating Kamaru. Currently, I, I don't see it yet. I mean, maybe Kamaru. So, are you saying older. that Kamaru is going to win against Leon? Is that what you're saying? Hi, I am. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I see uh, Kamaru coming in here and uh, grinding him out this fight. I, I I do not see this being a stand up fight at all. I, I mean, mean it's gonna start standing. Know. That's about it. You gotta remember that the first fight between them, Usman was like dominating that whole fight until he got Nate Diaz. I mean, let's be honest with that. Honestly, we should uh, ask Brian where the hell Kobe at because. We, we need to know. We need to know the the facts. Shit, yeah, Brian should have got Kobe Brian, on this. Is Brian and Brian and Kobe cool like that. They probably playing poker together right now. <laughs> That's how Kobe's been making his money, and he hasn't cared about fighting. But I, I, I would love to see Kobe uh, versus. Uh, shop got. That's I that's the fight ready. I think will happen because I don't think Jemaya is gonna think, make weight, yeah. man. I don't think he's gonna make it. Oh, right. down he's he's right. Right. I think they're going through Ramadan. They're going through Ramadan, Ramadan right now. So is it Ramadan already? <laughs> yeah, it's Ramadan going on. So like none of them Muslim fighters are gonna fight right now. Well, he's already said he's not going to be uh, a walkaway. Is it Ramadan right now? Yeah, I feel like I'm on Ramadan right now. <laughs> Go get something to eat, bro. <laughs> no, technically, you can eat right now. If it's Ramadan. Yeah, technically, yeah, you can. <laughs> right after we're done, I will, I, I will start eating. At like 10 o'clock. <laughs> Holy cow. It's not Ramadan yet. It's it starts on the twenty second. 
But yeah, Shavkat. But that yeah. also means he ain't gonna fight for a while. Nah, it's uh, it would have to be after April. And I imagine I mean, that six weeks from May or April twenty second. So six weeks from then. I mean that's enough time to line it up. I like that fight. Jamaya versus Shavkat. That fight It's been in the works. They've been talking about it. I hope it does though, man. They're both um so oh, thank you fighters. Yeah. With a lot of heart. A lot of heart. It would be perfect. That way we can just continue to ignore that Belial exists. Yeah. Oh, fuck the law. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. John said, what? fuck that in oh. left. He said, fuck that guy and person. peace out. <laughs> <laughs> that was his last thing. I hate the law. <laughs> fuck him. I'm out. <laughs> uh, hey, honestly, no, but like, but Sean no, Brady's like, a the law good has contender, been looking, though. Uh, who is Sean mm-hmm. Brady? Sean Brady versus Jeff Neal. Who was his last fight? Sean Brady's yeah. last fight against Bilal. I think it was. Ah, uh, yeah, he didn't <laughs> he he get got, he, he got, got knocked out or something, right? Yeah, he <laughs> lost. He, he lost. He lost. Lost. Yeah. He, that was his first L. So, mm-hmm. who's Bilal fighting next, though? Nobody. He don't got like I said, yet. everyone forgets he exists. Yo, the funny thing I heard was, like, Bilal will fight for a title shot on the prelims. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. It's going to be the prelims on a fight night also. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are ruthless. Sheesh. Hey, I actually like him too. <laughs> I actually think that he is a good fighter, and he has actually the the record that he's good. He's good. He deserves like respect, but nobody yeah. gives it to him. It's I, shitty. He, Dude. he took out. He took out um. Stephen Thompson. He mm-hmm. took out um. Bilal, not Bilal, my bad. Uh, you got Luke, Luke Brady. And Luke, and then yeah, you got poked in the mother- eye by Leon. He took out Damian Maya. You got poked in the eye by Leon. He took out. Oh, Lima's not a good win. Lima's trash. The other one, right, Diego? Yeah, Diego Lima. His brother's legit, Doug, but he trash. So he he's got a good record. He needs respect. I don't know why he doesn't get it, but... Remember the name. That's why. <laughs> he should have stuck with Bully B. Why? Yes. Oh my god, yeah, that was his name. <laughs> ah, yeah, man. Well, either way, the Shavkat dude, he's on the rise... And, I mean, with a 100% finish rate, you got to be going somewhere, right? You can't be going backwards. You're only going forward. Yeah. Like his fight. He was a little bit exposed in that. He looked human in that one. Yeah. He, did, he wasn't as dominant as he usually was, but... And Jeff Neal's a great win. But he showed oh, that he has a fucking yeah. chin, and he can power through. Yo, his mouthpiece got knocked out for, like, oh, He didn't give minutes. a fuck about that. And he said, fuck it. What mouthpiece? He's going in. Shop he's cut. like, I don't know why I have that shit in the first place. Yo, he's there Shop for one cut. job. He's there to fight. He's... Yeah. Everything else know, there is uh, just there. That Lurch motherfucker. He looks like Lurch. <laughs> All right, so we so got, what's up uh, next, boys? So like uh, we got Jan and uh, Mirab coming up. Yeah, let's 
Let's gloss over this. Jan one. and Mirab. Like, I feel like the Bantamweight... Well, yeah, the Bantamweight is going to be on hold because of Mirab and Aljamain being training partners, and they don't want to fight each other. So they're just going to have to keep on going down and down. Well, either way, I mean, they, they got they got enough tie-ups right now to begin with. With the whole Cejudo and... What's the name? Sean isn't O'Malley. that next? Didn't they announce that? Didn't they announce Cejudo versus Aljamain? Yeah, but we got like a, a triangle with that. With uh, the champion and then Sean O'Malley and Cejudo. But Cejudo's supposed to be fighting Aljamain, right? Mm hmm. Supposed to be, yeah. So even if uh, Mirab wins, he's still sitting behind Sean O'Malley. So you got two variables still to happen. Like, okay, Cejudo could beat Aljamain, and I'm pretty sure he's not getting an instant title fight rematch. I'm pretty sure he's going to go back to the queue. If Cejudo will win Cejudo and Aljamain fight, how does each person get the win? Uh, I see that fight going decision. Both ways. Yeah. I don't see either way. I mean, Cejudo might. No. Maybe. Maybe a sub with Cejudo. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But I see that fight going decision. I say Cejudo breaks out of a hold with a windbreaker or a windmill and then gets a capoeira kick on him. Knocks him out. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Eddie Gordo, that shit. It can happen. <laughs> it definitely no, I see that actually losing in submission either way. Whoever wins, I think that, that happens in submission. Whether a rear naked choke happens... Or Cejudo get something. Because Aljamain's like twice his size. Height wise, mm-hmm. at least. Yeah, and. But, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. No, yeah, like, like yeah, built wise, too, man. Aljamain's a big fucking dude, man. Like, he walks around at like 185, 190, probably. And to go against Cejudo, which he's been out of competition for like, what, like two, three years? Coming up three years now? He's like, healthy, though. No injuries. I, I don't think that's going to affect him. I, I don't think he's going to have ring rust. Like, he's been training all the greats right, right, right now. And I don't <laughs> think that he actually meant to be out this long. I think he was trying to do a power play for more money, and it just didn't work out mm. for him. So I think he's been staying in shape. He has been relevant on the uh, social media tip, so mm. that has a good sign of things. Yeah, and yeah, and not just that. Like all the embeddeds, like he's trending all these people: Wale, John um, Jones, Davidson, John Jones. Yeah. Like, yeah, all champs. So yeah, he he's training killers, and like. I actually gained more respect for Henry Cejudo ever since he retired than I did when he was an actual fighter. Because as he's training everyone, his fight IQ is fucking ridiculous. Because every yeah. time you see these like clips of, hey, they were training this for this exact finish and blah, 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 it's always Henry Cejudo. <clears throat> yeah. like, he calls that shit out. I'm like, wow, that motherfucker is actually a lot smarter than I thought he was. Although, the championship fight that he needs is Henry Cejudo versus Rey Mysterio. (laughs) Yeah, so, it it could be possible Mexico could actually come out with three to four champions this year. Mm Mm-hmm. Honestly. And it's crazy that the true Mexicans are beginning to shine. Like, you get what I'm saying? About time. Three of them, like, uh, hold on, man. I got to 
the question, but I got to go away real quick. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? It's like out of left field, right? All of a sudden, like Mexico's on the come up. Like, when did this happen? Mexico and France. Right? Like, France is coming up, too. And I'm like, that that's one I didn't expect. Mexico, I've been waiting for the day. Like, for the longest, we had, what, uh, it was Brazil, America, and the Russians. You know what I mean? It was Brazil, America, and Canadians for a while. See, that's North America. Well, yeah. They're with us. Okay. <laughs> but no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had GSP. Yeah, I mean, look at the dominant champions. John Jones, American. GSP, mm-hmm. Canadian. Anderson Silva, Brazilian. So they were like the main ones. And then all along the back, you had Russia. Because can't forget Arvlosky, Fedor, and this one dude named uh, Habib. Am I right? Like all along. Mm-hmm. Even though he got the, he finally got the title later on in his career, towards the tail end when he started fighting like the the real dudes. But now all of a sudden you got China, that country called Georgia. Not the state. You got Mexico now showing up. But Mexico got the history of fighters with the boxing in general. And now all of a sudden you got all these other countries showing up. Uh, I mean, Nigeria came up strong. That that whole continent. Africa. Yeah, Africa's coming up strong. South Africa's being represented now. Like all of a sudden you got these countries just, they're coming up. Uh, Poland. Uh, oh, yeah. where else? Uh, who who else is uh? Yeah, Poland. Uh, where's a uh, where's a uh, Kek? Not Kekistan. Hamza trained out of Sweden, right? With uh, yeah, he trains out of Sweden, them, right? He, ch- but, I mean, given he's training out <clears throat> of Sweden though, so that that matters. He's fighting out of. But Sweden already had uh Alexander, even though he was never champ. Yes. He he's the uncrowned champ. And, let's be honest there. And then of course you can't forget uh the UK and stuff. They got they been in the mix. Mhm. They like the uh the team that always gets to the playoffs or the championship game at least but that never makes the Super Bowl. Yeah. And when they now do they've win, had they get there. Two champs now? They got two champs now, right? Or was there more? Am I missing anybody? You got Bisbee and you got Leon Edwards. They got two. They got two. They got two. I mean, they're winning. So it's like now it's 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 getting a little competitive between the countries. Mm hmm. I'm all for it. One hundred percent for it. Yeah, I, I still believe there has been no Chinese champion yet, male wise. Not male wise, okay. Yeah, I was like, I mean, not male wise, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Wei yeah. Lee was there. No, Can't no, forget no. about her. She's oh, I didn't forget about her. She's she's champion right now. But I'm saying like, no Chinese male or has there been a an Asian male champion? Has there been one? An Asian male champion? Yeah. I would say one, but he represents Brazil. Who? Machida. Oh, yeah. He reps Brazil too hard. Yeah. You can't really count him. What does he have? Like Japanese or something? Yeah. Mm hmm. Because I was about to say, there's never been a Japanese champ in the UFC. He's born in Brazil, so he's Brazilian. I think the only Asian one was, is literally Wei Li, right? Like Asian boy, yeah. I believe so. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait. Yeah, but who else is like a um, real popular fighter? Asian fighter. Like, you got Wei Li, 
Korean Zombie. Horiguchi was for a long time. Well, he still is in Ryzen. Like, Horiguchi's a beast. If Horiguchi came back to the UFC right now, I think he'd be champ. 100%. Horiguchi is a fucking killer. Well, wait, Clay. He's in uh, Bantamweight. He's in okay. Bantamweight, and he has he he has held the Bellator and the Ryzen Championship. And he fought Demetrius Johnson for the UFC Championship, but um, got suplexed into an armbar. Hear me out. No! Hear me out. Hear me out. My favorite. Where is Dagestan? Yeah. Dagestan has there's one the, champ? Uh, there's it, a lightweight division. That's it, where they're at. Is it, is it in Europe or is it in Asia? It's Russia. Where so is that's Russia? A, um... Where is Russia? It's a is really it good Asia point. or is it Europe? It's in Russia. No, I'm, just I'm just saying, though. Hey. Hey. All right. All right. So, like, Somebody can answer this for me. Let me know. Let me know. Oh, no, man. Are the Russians it's... Asian or are they European? Or are they just Russian? Depends on the part of uh, Russia. Oh boy, here we go. Here it we depends go. Depends on what kind of school map you're looking at, too. If they're more know, to but... the east, is what you're telling me. If they're more to the <clears throat> east, if they're the far east, they're Asian, and if they're to the west, they're European. All right. Is that what you're telling me? So, like, I guess to um, kind of piggyback on that, who what? What type of Russian is the better fighter? The Russian that has the eyes like Khabib? Or the Russians that have the eyes like Shavkat no, and I know. Peter Yod? I know. I know. I know. It's the Russians with the longer last name. <laughs> and the harder to pronounce last names. If those last names are hard to pronounce, they're killers. With like, few exceptions. Too many consonants. Few exceptions, though. If you got like a uh, Peter Yan, he's an exception. That dude's a killer. Yeah, speaking about Peter Yan, who you got? I'm going with Peter Yan, bro. Straight up. I'm going with Peter Yan. He got prematurely robbed. Yeah, man. Against the O'Malley fight, bro. Yeah. He can won that shit, dude. And I feel it's the like, Abu Dhabi, but I feel like his uh wrestling defense is good enough to where Mirab might have issues with him, honestly. Alright, so MMA math, right? Who did um Jan beat for the championship belt, I guess? Was Aldo, right? Yes. And then Mirab versus Aldo was pretty controversial, I thought. Uh, he was hugging him the whole time. Yeah. Dude. So do you think that's how it's going to go this uh, this fight with those two? With Jan and um, Mirab? No, nah, I think uh, Peter Young's stronger, younger, more capable. He don't got uh, the fight miles that Aldo has. You know what I'm saying? Is Peter Young younger? Let's see. Let's find out. But Peter Young is, no, I'm... he is 43 years old. What? Peter Young is not 43 years old, bro. <laughs> what? No fucking way. <laughs> what did I just walk into? <laughs> okay, uh, hey, 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 I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying here. I'm lying. I am lying. Peter Young's only 30 years old. In oh, fighter oh. years, he's 43 years old. How is Marab? Oh, 
Hold up. Damn, this UFC website is off the chain, bro. 32. Yeah, 30. Okay, so he's a little bit older. Okay, so Mirab is 47. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and Aldo in fight exactly. years, he's like 52. 109. <laughs> Yeah, like you got you gotta look at the miles, man. It's like Aldo got the the body shape car wise of like a Ferrari that has two hundred and twenty two miles on it. Two hundred and twenty two thousand miles is what I was saying. Not just two hundred and twenty two miles. Aldo's well, that's been fighting for and a Ferrari a wouldn't time. run at that point. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Aldo's been fighting for a very long time. He's been fighting since we were like 17 or 18. He's got a fight coming yeah. up too, though, or doesn't he? It's boxing. Auto? Boxing match with the game break. Yeah. Boxing is yeah. different from MMA. I, yeah. Okay. MMA, you got to stay I'm more alert, so I feel like you're using more of everything. You get what I'm saying? Who's the boxing goat? Uh, fucking Jake Paul? Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold up. How, okay. Let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I got Jan winning this weekend. Chris? Oh, Jan. I'm, I like Jan. Mark? So I'm going with Jan. Oh, 100% Jan. Okay. And Marab, Marab is getting the uh, Peter Jan that wants to get back at Sean O'Malley. So, yeah. Most of all... The Power Slap finale is March 11th, free on Rumble. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but I hope the Slap Jesus is in the finals. I have not watched oh this show God, since. I, love Slap Jesus, I have not watched this show in so long, but I hope Slap Jesus is in the finale. But uh, boxing wise, yeah. hey, Tommy Fury put a stamp on that shit. Yeah, even though nah, he got, like, rigged. knocked down on the fucking, what was it, the seventh round or what whatever. Was the last round. Seventh or eighth. Yeah. I'm just so happy that got, they didn't, uh, the judges didn't sway towards that. There was no corruption. That. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the well, way I, mean, I saw they couldn't. it. I only saw it, uh, honestly, I saw maybe uh, two rounds, the third round and the eighth round because of the knockdown for Jake Paul. Because, dude, Tommy Fury was jabbing his ass off. Like, literally. Like, he really looked like the better boxer. I mean, he's the only actual boxer out of those two. But given it just... He was able to, uh, to, put, the, uh, to put the combos together. He was actually... Like Tommy was, man. He looked like he was boxing and Jake Paul was looking for that one hitter the whole fight. Like, even Jake Paul's jab was like odd to me is like he was overreaching it was like he was stretching out for a jab it made no sense he was like putting his head low then raising it, it just it just didn't look right like i didn't understand what's going on and every time they would clinch up it didn't make sense to me it's like okay you want to box him but you're clinching oh. the whole time and it looked like he was trying to whisper something in his ear the whole time too you know what i'm saying <laughs> Yeah, that's the one thing I didn't like about the fight. There was a whole whole bunch of clinching. They yeah. just kept on clinching. And then, uh, what, Tommy Fury got a, a point taken away because he was clinching too much? Come on. They both they both lost points for clinching too much. But I then again, was, that ref was kind of bogus. <laughs> that's all I got to say about Dude, that. Dude, all, all boxing refs look bogus, man. They all look like, I don't know, they got a shift done at the... At the Publix warehouse or something. <laughs> they got what? Done where? Shots fired. <laughs> I feel like they all got a shift done at the Publix warehouse because they're wearing the little thingy, the fucking, the back brace. They working at Winn-Dixie warehouse, not Publix warehouse. <laughs> oh, my bad. My I, bad. I think those dog. shots were fired. <laughs> those shots were fired. Strays got hit. Nah, they're working at Winn Dixie Warehouse. They're working at the Publix Warehouse. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they're working at uh, Winn Dixie Warehouse. They ain't working at Publix Warehouse. Hey, don't hate on Brian. Yeah, they're, like they're, Publix Warehouse holds uh, uh, higher standards. Warehouse. 
<laughs> they're held to higher standards yeah, at Publix, not at Winn Dixie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Winn Dixie, hey, they, they, they're at the bottom of the barrel. I don't know what they're doing over there, but they're doing something. I'm going to get McLean on you, man. <laughs> man, he, he works for NASA. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but either way, the uh, if you want to watch some real boxing, April 22nd, you got Tank. I was about to say Tank Abbott. Jesus I was Christ. like, what? <laughs> you got Tank Davis against uh, Ryan Garcia. Garcia. Yeah, man, that's going to be a good one. That's a very interesting matchup. We could talk about that as it gets closer. We it, should. It's power versus speed, in my opinion. Who's got the power? Who's power and who, who's speed? Who do you think? Tank's definitely speed. Okay, I... Yeah. No, well, okay, okay. Coming from an unbiased thing, like, I have no idea. I don't keep up with boxing like that. But I feel like, um... Listen to the Garcia. names. <laughs> tank. This man is oh, Tank. Power. Do you know a fast power. Tank? No, yeah, man. It's all, it's all the power. Abraham, yeah, man. But... Is that the shit off Halo, bro? What's, what's the fast-ass Tank on Halo? What's the fast-ass Tank on Halo? I was actually talking about the U.S. military Tank. That shit got, like, a top speed of, like, 45. <laughs> That's a fast Tank. Abram... <laughs> That's a name, bro. That's a fast tank, bro. <laughs> but I'm saying, man, like tank. You hear that name? This dude should be like blowing people up, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you see Ryan Garcia. He, that boy got fast hands, bro. So he would be the speedster. <laughs> hey, man, hey. hey. Ryan Garcia, hey, man. Hey, hey, I got hey. Ryan. I give him props though, man. He's he's got some good drills. Blindfolded, dodging stuff. Like he's got some good drills. <laughs> now given he's got a solid chin though. I seen him get dropped though and come back and win a fight. We ain't went up and wait. Speaking of solid chins, um about Ryan Span. <laughs> oh, he's fighting. This weekend, they He's postponed that Krilov. fight. Yeah, Oof. Well, that's a good fight. Yeah, we could we could uh, mm. touch up on that division. That division is going to be very interesting in the coming year. Or the why is that a catchweight bout? I think it's because um, uh, because of the uh, making weight twice within such a short like uh, time span. Uh, you know okay. what I'm saying? Gotcha, it's like gotcha. I'm pretty sure uh, they both made weight or like close to it, so they. I already, think they both. Yeah, they both made weight, and then like um, they depleted themselves once, and they don't want to do it again. They don't want to pull a Tony Ferguson or a Holloway or a Holloway. But I really think Holloway. Tony Ferguson messed himself up with that one. Yeah, he did that on Tony. Tony Ferguson versus Kevin Lee, second fight. Oh, they're gonna do a Let's part two. Fight. They're gonna do a run back. Kevin Lee got signed back to the UFC. Are yeah. you saying that's actually happening, or are you saying that what if you want? Not that? saying it's happening. No, I, I mean I don't want it, but I saw a Twitter sphere where it, they're talking about it happening. Hmm. I want that happening. That sounds like a great fight. I mean, that's a man. good that's a good comeback for Kevin Lee though. Well man, Tony Just got saying. shafted, bro. Club Tony. You know what they say, man. My boys ain't even um, rank no more. Just put it that way. Who are you talking about? Yeah. The Harvard graduate? Tony even uh oh my god. Stop it. No, Ferguson's not even ranked anymore. Stop it. I mean, dude, he lost to nothing but good people, though. If you think about it. True. It, it is kind of disgraceful that he ain't even in the rankings anymore. But I think it's because he tried to go to, like, 170, isn't it? He took the fight with Nate Diaz at 170. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
so it's, it's like messed up in a way like damn bro like you just gonna let for real like I, I feel Tony Ferguson might be able to beat like Dan Hooker yeah I can see that you know what I'm saying Dan Hooker still ranked. I think he can still beat Dos Anjos, <laughs> too. He could probably still beat Dos Anjos. This would be a good topic. Like, who can uh, to- Tony Ferguson beat in the division? This should be a good topic. Who Dan Hooker, Hooker obviously. Jalen Turner. Jalen Turner? Are you talking about the, uh, the tall <laughs> oh, I know that motherfucker. <laughs> Never mind. He used to be a Now that I weight. actually looked at his photo, I know who he is. He got All the right. mohawk, right? <laughs> Yeah, because I was like, who the fuck is this motherfucker? But, um, <laughs> he just yeah, lost yeah, the game right, didn't he? I apologize, Jalen Turner. <laughs> yeah, before we get on like a crazy tangent and a two-hour yeah. pod, we're going to call it. Nice. All right. All right, All boys. Right. Yeah, we've been going on for... Uh, Slightly drunk. I was going to say 140 minutes, but an hour and 40 minutes. And Same I guess, shit, right? I guess B Woods is still at the final table right now with Kobe. That right, game is going to beat his long. ass. One way or another, right? <laughs> yeah. We just uh, eight thirty comes soon, man. And zip it out. All right, uh, oh, yeah, Ashy Knuckles, boys. good pod. Zip it up and zip it out. Peace. Zip it up. <laughs>